Hello and welcome to Augustine Kitesurf's YouTube channel where we do our best to explain our boards to you in a way that you can understand and try and make some sense of it instead of just staring at our website saying, God, I wish someone made a video on this. It would have been great. Anyway, all that being said, let's jump into today's board. So today's board that we're looking at is the P-Line. And the P-Line is sort of our go-to board for kind of every condition. It's pretty good for light wind, marginal conditions, it's great when it's cranking, and it's perfect when it's perfect, because when it's perfect, everything is perfect. The model that we have in our hands right now is the 5.8, and it is 5 foot 8 inches long, and 19 inches wide, and 2 and 1 eighth of an inch thick. The plan shape on this board is something that you've seen before. It's a rounded squash. You know, whenever you think about the iconic shortboard, it's probably a rounded squash that you have in mind. So. Starting at the back and working to the front, let's give you a little bit of information on this board. The rounded squash and why we chose it basically had to do with what we wanted this board to do, which was everything. And it gives a nice, neutral, kind of predictable feel to it, and it has a really nice tendency to hold a rail really well and to release nice and soft, as opposed to a really abrupt sort of release, like you might see out of like a fishtail or a swallowtail or something like this. This board holds its rail, and it holds it really well. So moving up to the width of the board, it's 19 inches wide. What can we say there? It's, just, it's 19 inches wide, pretty common width for a lot of boards. And moving up towards the nose, um, it's really just a pointed nose. There's nothing too crazy or progressive here. We're not seeing a big chop. We're not seeing a pickle fork. We're not seeing anything that you haven't seen before. But this board is something like you've probably never ridden before. So, in order to really get into the magic of this board, we need to take a look at the bottom of this board. We're going to talk about the concaves that are in it. So, in a word, the concaves are basically what's going to give you the amount of lift that you want in a board, and it's going to help you turn, and it's going to help you do a lot of different things. So, starting up in the nose of this board, it is a really, really shallow, single concave. Normally, we don't even put much concave in the nose of the boards, but this one, we want it to get up in plane really fast, so we put a small amount of single concave. Now moving towards the middle of the board, if you just don't even look at it, you just use your inner guidance and feel it, but mostly use your fingers, you can feel that this board has a slight little ridge in the middle. And that's because it's a single concave, with sort of a little double concave ridge, right in the middle. And it gets more exaggerated the more we go down here and feel it all the way back, where it turns into a genuine double concave. The reason that we put a nice single concave in here is it generates a lot of lift really quick. This board likes to basically pick up out of the water and get going really fast. Getting you, one, out of the way of some waves that might be crashing your direction, or two, getting out of a crowded beach. Because if any of you have ever kited at really, really popular kite spots, you know the last place you want to be is at the main beach. Fun to hang out, kind of a pain in the ass to kite there. Anyway, so single concave, and it's blending back into a double. And the double gets pretty deep in between the fins. And that helps this board do something really well. One it's gonna help it turn really well. So, whenever we have the board like this, and we go to turn it, you don't have to put as much input onto the back of the board to make the whole thing come over. Because instead of working one big concave, you're working two, and you have three points of leverage coming off of it. And it's pretty helpful. So we're talking about rocker. And what do we mean by rocker? We mean the curves that go along the bottom of this board. So, moving into the nose rocker here, Pretty, actually it's not a ton of rocker there, it's a pretty shallow rocker, which gets you going pretty fast, very quickly. I wanted to say pretty fast, pretty fast, but it sounded dumb, and now I've said the whole thing and I'm just going to leave it in the video. So it has a fairly shallow rocker, a good amount of little nose flip here, moving back in, and on other boards sometimes we do like a continuous rocker, so one curve here, one curve there. This actually has a section of about three inches, and I think it's right around here, that's flat. And the reason we do that is it helps with doing airs, and it helps turning and pivoting this board when it's flat like this for sort of more new, new school maneuvers, and really nice whenever you're landing airs too, to sort of have a stable platform to come down on. The board doesn't want to just turn right away. It's okay with being flat and going straight for a little while. And then the tail rocker, which is pretty standard tail rocker, and the foil of the board, yeah, holds foam pretty good. I mean, 23, 24 liters on this board. And that's about all I have to say on rocker. So we've talked about rocker and now let's talk about the rails. The rails on this board are a 70-30. 
So we've got 70% of the rail on the top and 30% on the bottom, and the line in the middle is really important. And it's really important for a couple of reasons. One is that it cuts chop because it's a little bit lower and a little bit harder, so it can really slice through the chop, and it can also just really penetrate through bumps and things like that. It also still has enough volume in it that whenever you get on a wave, you don't feel like you're just like knifing into this thing and almost like pushing too far into the wave face. And the other thing that it does is it holds speed incredibly well. And by holding speed, we can go faster, we can kite longer, we can do those things that we like to do on a kite surfboard. And that's fun. So let's talk about materials. The materials on this board that we use are a little bit different than a lot of the boards you're going to see out there. We like to blend different types of fiberglass, different types of carbon fiber to give a really unique feel and also make a board that's incredibly light. How light whenever we say incredibly light? Between 5 and 6 pounds on this particular model depending on what size you get. We do them in 5.6, 5.8, 5, 5 5.10. Talking about materials, we've got to start at the middle of the board and work our way out. So, we're going to start with the foam, and we use a high-density EPS foam. We like it for a couple of reasons. One, you can recycle it, and we'll post a link below where you can see a company who we actually get some of our blanks from that have a recycling program for it. You can turn your old laptop case and your whatever you know, junk you bought from Costco that has all the foam packing in it. You can send that to Marco Foam, get them to recycle it, turn it into a surfboard blank. We can build your board. It's super cool. So we're going to talk about materials on this board. We've talked a little bit about the blank and now we're going to move into the fiberglass itself. So the glass that we use on these boards are a blend of different fiberglasses and carbon fiber to give us the strength and flex characteristics that we want in our boards. Moving from the nose of the board and working our way back, we've got eight layers of e-glass up in the nose section of the board where we don't do a ton of riding. Moving under our foot, we've got 16 ounces of fiberglass, and that's to deal with all the heavy impact that we get here. Now it's not just e-glass, we're actually using s-glass on these more impact prone areas of the board, and s-glass is great because it gives you about 20% more strength in the glass, so it's going to be less prone to crushing, it's going to be less prone to cracking or fatigue or failure or anything like that, so we like to use s-glass strategically in some locations. And moving back towards the board, we've got three layers of glass here. We've got a couple layers of e-glass. We've got one layer of S. And then we've got this beautiful carbon fiber vector net. And what it does is it's even better at mitigating damage because we all know carbon fiber is incredibly stiff and strong. But when it's in a net like this, it actually allows the board's tail to flex how we want it. And it gives our boards a really great sort of drivey, energetic feel when you're kiting them. So that's the deck of the board. And we're going to flip this thing over and talk a little bit about the bottom of this board. And it's pretty important because there's a lot of things happening in this board. So, I'm going to jump into it, and we're going to talk about the stringer that we use in these boards. It is a composite stringer for this particular model. And we use the composite stringer because it's about three times stronger than wood, and it has a really nice flex characteristic. And we use this carbon fiber strip here on the bottom to manage the flex and also give us extra strength in the high stress areas of the board. By using the carbon fiber, it enables us to keep the tail and the nose of the board a little bit more flexible where we want it. And that's nice, because if you have a slightly flexier tail, you can get a really nice, great, drivey feeling off the board. Let's talk about the glass that we use on the bottom of these boards, too. This one here is done up in our carbon light, so it's the lightest option that you can get from us. And it's got 4 ounce e-glass all throughout the bottom until you get to the tail section where we have 8 ounces of it because we've got the fin boxes here and it's going to take a lot of abuse and a lot of torque. We want to make you a board that's light, but we also want to make it super strong. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions, please hit us up at our website. There's links below. You can shoot us an email or you can check out our Instagram. You can check out our Facebook and get in touch with us. If you have any questions, we're totally accessible and love to hear from you. Thanks. See you at the beach. Bye-bye.